it would make sense to have a workflow where we can get to a million conclusions, but then we can't actually pass it on to the players. Depending on, uh, on, on what we decide, we put uh, some content together for the players before the, the match, so hour 45 before. That's when we announce the lineups. So we'll have that on my laptop ready to, to put in front of the players. Then it's a bit of a waiting game until lineups are announced. Then it gets a bit frantic with trying to understand what the opposition are doing, where we, we can start to kind of predict and assess where we're going to get joy, where we're going to get troubles. I'll put it on, up on the board so the players know. I'll give them a bit of information in between. I can just go through. Uh, sometimes good practice is to just give an example of a clip they've done in training or a clip from an elite player. And then from there, I'll go up to the gantry. I've got the radio so I can just radio down anything I see. The guys can radio up anything that they're particularly interested in. I can just clip it straight away. But particularly at half time, we bring it down. I give them a better, clearer picture of what's going on. The ability to look at half time with the, with the quality of the camera that it gives you and the immediate feedback that it gives you, I think is really important because as a coach, you, you have a small window at half time where you can make those changes um, and be proactive and really get messages across. When the players are out on the pitch, it's so hard to get quality of message across. We have the cameras, the wide lens vantage point, being able to clip things. By the time I'm in at half time, when you have that 15 minutes, you've got to use it really well. And I think BPro certainly gives us the feedback to allow us to be more efficient at half time. I try to affect the outcome of a football match. I probably don't as much, but to, to, to have that option and to try and to, to show that at half time or, or in game, uh, but the other one, I think this is the one that I really come, uh, it, it's natural to, to me and it happens more, is um, the, the, the reflection and the review of the game. So our post-match, why have we had success? Why were we unsuccessful? Uh, what were the factors? How can we get better? How can we assure that we keep at it? Myself and the staff tend to watch the games back anyway, um, of course, the, the next day. But then when we come in on the Monday morning, Jao will have will have clipped it for us. And, and the more we've worked together, the more he knows what sort of things I'd want to look for. And then he will present to, to me what he's seen. So breakdown of what we do in possession, out of possession, any other trends within the game or problems that we might have had. And then that could be 20 minutes, half an hour, but then we'll we'll clip that down to a, a more manageable amount for the players. We end up doing this one. Just what you're talking about, body position, that I heard. Yeah. He's, yeah, his body shape is just yeah. to go, look. He just needs to He needs to turn, up. open up, play there, come out. Yeah. But then we just do that. Yeah, do you want this? I can clip it. Yeah, I think so. Because I know it's on half time, but we can control yeah. this moment. There's still two minutes left of this half. With the training ground footage, what we tend to do um, is after the session, we'll just use that as a, another reflection. So we'll have the session objectives and we'll have objectives for, for all the, the drills. And we'll just like verify that those behaviours are being met. And if they aren't, it's, it's easy to just go there and identify why and start to push it out. Also, I should say we, we push it out a lot when the behaviours are good because we feel that actually it's worked quite well for us when we see something good, we praise it, and then it starts to happen more and more. I've always liked to film trainings because I like to watch back what we're doing because you get so involved with the training. I think being able to be more reflective on your own practice is massive. I think it de depends on, on the training that we do. Like today, when we've had the bigger area stuff, there might be some really good clips of some of the movements that we've discussed. We might just think about one or two players and key roles and after the training, we can just we can just put it on the TV. We sit down, we flick through the training, and, and if we see some patterns or movements or things that we thought were a problem in the session, we can clip them. Either we send them to the players with some notes on them, or, or we maybe we catch them in the morning, sit down for five minutes, go back through their training from the day before. Right 
too much distance that isn't covered. So that means that this pass needs to be bigger. And as the pass is bigger, it means that it's harder to land on things if we don't occupy the centre of the pitch. Yeah, that's what Gaffer's saying now. There was a moment today that it, we've had our centre mid making a run, which means that structurally we're going to create a gap there. So what we need to do is to arrive back into that gap so that we're more secure behind the ball, so that we can land on second balls and keep going, uh, so that we can take space that's just been vacated. And as I saw that with B Pro, I could literally just get my phone up, see it go five seconds back, see the picture, confirm it, because at, at pitch level, you can sometimes think you've seen something and you haven't. And you, there's just a little button you press, you click on it and it just goes straight into your library and your platform. And then I'm going to, uh, in a bit, I'm going to push that one out to to some players, probably the, the, the midfield and attacking unit. That's the thing that was missing in the past. And that's the way it's where it's come a long way is because you'd have to do it visually on the training pitch, but then you're losing on, on lads' concentration to their load, to their, you stand out on the pitch ages and people switch off. Here, you can do it within instance, clip it all, done, done, done. And I know for someone technical like the gaffer, that's going to be massive because he needs to get his points across very quickly. You need to, to create a culture within the group where the players want to be reflective and they, they're not afraid to look at the way in which they play. I think that's fundamental to analysis that the players have to be open and not afraid to critique. You know, when we come in, it's like we discuss the, the game, we discuss uh, how we can improve and the players have to be on board with that. One of our centre forwards, we've, we've basically used our training cameras to, to spot something that would have probably taken us a lot longer to spot if we didn't review our training process, which can only happen with the cameras, with the footage. Um, and we've realised that actually there was a little tweak in his movement inside the box that we thought would bring a lot of benefits to to him. We've then showed him the pictures and it became clear. And then we've showed him a couple of elite examples. I want to show you something afterwards. I watched the training back yesterday and looked at a couple of your movements in the box. Right. And I think it's something that we're going to work with on. I'm going to do, I'm going to clip it mm. today so we can go through it on Friday. Oh, but some little things that I think, I think will give you an edge inside the box. Yeah. The manager sort of said to me, and we've watched certain clips of certain players. One was Patrick Bamford we watched, and uh, it was sort of the movement from taking the defender away to then attack the space. And well, it's paid off for me. I probably scored about maybe two or three goals from that, or for maybe four this season. Ultimately, they're the people that are going to go on the pitch and, and play the game and, and win his football matches. And so that they're the important ones. So it, it wouldn't make sense to have a workflow where we can get to a million conclusions, but then we can't actually pass it on to the players. And very important for us that the players can just open their phone and and just quickly go on the app and they can go to their, their groups and open their individual clips or their unit meeting clips. They can throw comments in to ask me or ask the, the gaffer or ask whoever it might be. Zhao sort of got that across when we first started using the B Pro app. But as it's gone on, everyone's interacted more over it. I mean, the coaches have got really involved in it as well, which I think is good. And I speak to Sam Slocum, the goalkeeper, and every morning we have a conversation about, oh, did you see that back? Or did you see this, what we could do better? I mean, we tend to upload the, the games onto the B Pro system and then we can clip it down. I think it's been very good for, for the set plays where we can have specific set play groups and then put in some of the opposition set plays into that so that the players can access that through the week. And we tend to have a main full team meeting around opposition analysis, but then following that we can put more specific clips onto the B Pro for the, so if we have a defending group, we can put the opposition attackers on their common movements and trends. So I think it allows us to break, break it down and chunk it to the players and give it to them that way. Because as it goes out there, yeah, stay in your slot. It's a right back. It's only ever yeah. going to stand on the ball yeah. and pass back inside. The older I've got, you see the same things, but you just want to know that you're seeing the same things because, and that's why analysis is so important. Because if you come too safe with it and say, oh, you think you know it all, there'll be a guy that does something completely out of different or new or something random that you don't analyse and then you're getting left behind again or you're, having, you're dropping the team's performance because you haven't looked into it. The 
more you work together with staff, I think not only analysts, but physical staff and uh, medical staff, I think everybody starts to understand how you want the training and you start to connect there. So obviously that you become very close, close knit group and understanding each other, each other's roles and certainly how we want the, the final picture to look is massive. I agree. I think it's such a big operation uh, in, in running a football club uh, that we need to have this understanding and connection and and he puts you at ease, gives you the trust to be independent in what you do. Uh, we can have good, honest discussions. I've got the vantage, so it's good that I'm looking for in, on a match day for this, the stuff that, that fits into our game model. So yeah, it's definitely, again, it's definitely really important to, to, to have that connection.